So, you've booked your tickets to Bali. You're super excited because it's your first time, but you don't know where to start preparing, or you're worried and not sure what to look out for. We're going to give you our travel tips to Bali to make your trip a whole lot easier. Before we continue, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. Let's begin. First and most obvious, but I cannot stress to you how important it is to bring that SPF 50. Even though I just said it was obvious, I actually didn't wear any sun protection for the first few days. Yes, this was very stupid of me, and yes, I really really regret it. Looking back in hindsight, I should have slapped the cream on before I even landed there. After a couple of days, my skin began turning red, and by the time I decided to put on protection, it was too late. My skin had already peeled, and it was already painful to the touch. Even though we travelled to Bali in mid-September, the sun was still beaming for hours on end, so don't make the same mistake I did and wear the sunscreen. The Balinese markets are very busy and condensed. You can find stalls that sell all sorts of things. My biggest advice is if you see something you like, don't buy it there and then. Ask the vendor how much it is first, they'll tell you their price. Then you can bargain your way down to about one third of the original price. But for the vendors that are a bit stubborn, you can move on as there are multiple vendors that sell the same items. I remember one time Fawn was buying some keyrings and they wanted to charge us about 100,000 rupiah for a pack of four which works out to about 571 euros. It doesn't seem like much, but you can get it for much cheaper. And why wouldn't you? We told them it was a bit too much and that we can only do 50,000 rupiah, which is about half the value. Initially, the vendor said it was too low, so we told them it's okay and walked away. As we walked away, they began calling us back and actually accepted our offer. So that's just one example of why you shouldn't buy the first price they give you, because you can get it for much, much less. Now airport transfers is usually something we never do on our trips because we either like to learn how to use public transport such as the train or the bus or we like to book our own taxis at the airport. But in the case of Bali, it is highly recommended that you plan this well in advance and I'll tell you exactly why. When we landed in Bali, we thought it would be simple enough to just go outside and grab yourself a taxi. However, as we got outside the airport, we were immediately swarmed by a group of taxi drivers. It actually got so bad to the point where one of the taxi drivers grabbed me by the arm and tried to direct me towards his taxi. Fong actually got so angry that she told the guy to leave us alone and to stop holding on to me. Eventually, we got away from the busy part of the airport, but there were still some taxi drivers following us. Now, at this point, we were exhausted and tired, and we just wanted to get out of this place, so we decided to take a taxi from one of them, who turns out to be a fake taxi driver, and I'll explain this to you in the next tip. The Bluebird Group is a taxi company that is most well known in Bali. I really recommend that you download their app. This way, you can avoid getting into fake taxis that try to imitate Bluebird. Two things happened to us. First one, we got into a fake taxi we thought that was Bluebird. This guy had no information plates or meters inside his car. All he had was loud music and an open beer wall. Yeah. And I honestly didn't know if this guy was sober or not at the time he was driving us. Second thing that happened to us was that we flagged down a taxi that we thought was Bluebird. It looked exactly like one. It had everything from the outside, except it wasn't like that on the inside. This guy's car barely even worked properly. He didn't even know where he was driving and worst of all, there was no aircon. We almost turned into fried rice. Watch the time you land in Bali because the traffic there can drive anyone mad. It took us 3 hours to get from the airport to Ubud, when the trip should have only took us 1.5 hours. If you haven't already booked your flights, then I recommend you avoid the early morning hours and the rush hour, which is around 4 to 7 pm. This is completely up to you and how you like to travel, but trust me, you'll be sweating non stop. I packed a lot of t shirts and some tin shirts, thinking it would be fine to wear, but I was so wrong. I ended up not wearing half of my packed clothes and opted to wearing tank tops 90% of the time. I also had to get laundry service very very often because my clothes would be drenched in sweat. Some accessories that I recommend are sunglasses and a cap. The sunglasses to protect your eyes and a cap to protect your head from getting heat strokes. These little details can make all the difference. This tip is very simple and can save you some money. Don't buy the sarongs from the street vendors because they'll be made available once you pay for the ticket entrance. Our final tip is Balinese cuisine. Few things I really recommend is the babi guling and the nasi goreng. 
These dishes are extremely tasty and inexpensive. By far my favorite dish and that I highly highly recommend is the Bebek Goreng. This is basically a fried duck and is absolutely delicious. Thanks guys for watching, hopefully you've learned something new and take on some of our tips. We hope you enjoy Bali to its fullest. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment anytime.